Shema Yisrael, Adonai Eloheinu, Adonai Echad. Baruch Shem Kavon, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Blessed is his glorious kingdom forever and ever and ever. Amen. 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 We'll stand for the Lord's Prayer. Avinu Sheva Shemayim Yid Kodesh Shemka. Vayit barek malkutka retsoneka iehe, asui bashamayim uva aretz, vatitain lachmenu, timi di eat, umkolanu. Katotenu kaashir anaknu mochalim, lako tiim lanu, ve al tevi enu, lidei nisa yon. Vasha Marenu Mikol Ra Amin. Our Father in heaven, may your name be sanctified. May your kingdom be blessed. Your will shall be done in heaven and on earth. Give us our bread daily. Forgive us the debt of our sins as we forgive the debt of those who sin against us. Do not bring us into the hands of a test and protect us from all evil. Amen. Well, Shabbat Shalom, and welcome everybody on the. He sit down. Welcome everybody on the internet and wherever this is going. And uh, we're so happy and privileged that you are joining us this morning as we proceed with the awesomeness of God's language, Ivrit. Amen? All right, so let's get started here. You know, before we started our lesson, we had a discussion about the length of time that we think the earth has been in existence, and if dinosaurs ruled and reigned, and when they did, and light years of sound and light traveling past the sun, past the galaxy, and if man really could measure this, that, and the other. And we talk about man's time, but there's a time that there was God's Word way, way back when. And God's Word has never changed from all that time until now. Man's movement in the earth changes from time to time. Everything is cyclical in man's operation. Nothing new under the sun. But yet, when we look at God's Word, it's a straight line. never changes. And that's what we can hang up on. Good morning. Good morning. That's what we can hang up on is if everything else, which it will, changes, nothing changes with God's Word. And that's what we're going to study today. We're going to conclude on our lesson on the Nun, 
which represents life. And as we conclude this, we're going to find out that God's life never changes. It's always the same. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. So let's get started and see what we can come up with today as we continue with the letter Nun. This, le this lesson is going to be Nun Gimel. Aleph, Bet, Gimel. Third lesson of the letter. Nun Gimel. Since this is Shabbat, let's investigate this word. This is not going to have anything to do with the nun, but Shabbat has a meaning for all, uh, actually, Jews and Gentiles, really. It comes from the root word Yashav. Yashav. The Shav. You see how that is? A sheen and the bob. Uh, a sheen and the bet. Uh, means sitting or resting or returning. So this is Shabbat. So what are we doing? We're returning back to the Lord's word where he says rest today. All right? It also means to come back. We mean come back. When I was saying about cyclical, we always come back to where God wants us from beginning to end. He made the earth first, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth day. He rested on the seventh. Keep going round and round. We go through our work. We end up on the, on the sixth day, uh, seventh day, and we rest. In ancient times, the work could not be done if one was sitting. Working relates to being on your feet or standing. That's the, that's the Jewish connotation of work. Isn't that something? All right. Let's go on our, on our nun letter. Ne-sher. Ne-sher. We've got a nun, a she, and a resh. Nesher means eagle. I've always been fascinated with that bird, the eagle, the bald eagle. It became almost extinct, but now it's come back again. But when you see the bald eagle, you see a, a majesty of, of God's creation. Strength, power. Eyesight is better than, than we have. Some like 200 times better than the human being. I could be wrong on that, but I think I heard that once. But he can see from 10,000 feet up in the air. He can see a fish. And, it ta and he can travel, they say, 100 miles an hour diving with his talents spread out aimed at a fish at 10,000 feet up. And he makes a dive bomb, just straight on down. And then he swoops and he grabs his talent and locks it and takes the fish up. There have been stories where the eagle has drowned because he got a fish that was too big for him to handle but he would not let go, and he went down with the fish. That's something. The eagle has the capability of grabbing up to four pounds, just swooping down, grabbing four pounds, and adiosing it up back to the nest or wherever he is going to eat or feed, feed his, his uh, eaglets. A symbol comes from the Bible for the eagle, Nesher. Devarim, Deuteronomy 32, 10 through 13 says, 
He found him in the desert land, in the howling waste of a wilderness. He encircled him. He cared for him. He guarded him as a pupil of his eye, like an eagle that stirs up its nest, that hovers over its young. He spread his wings and caught them. He carried them in, on his pinions. Pinions means wings. The Lord alone guided him, and, was, and there was no foreign god with him. He made him ride on the high places of the earth, and he ate the produce of the field. And he made him suck honey from the rock and oil from the flinty rock. The eagle is a very vicious animal. And he will kill anything to protect his young. Anybody know the story about the eagle? I love telling this story. It's true. And I want, when I, when I relate this, I would like to have you think spiritually about this. When the female eagle is about ready to come into her mating season, she will grab big pieces of stick. She will fly way, way up in the, in the air. Now, mind you, the, the male eagle is familiar with the breeding cycle as well. So he knows what's going on because he's going to be after the female. So the female, taking that stick way up in the air, drops the stick. There's going to be other male eagles around, and they are going to catch the stick as it's going down and takes it back on up to the, to the uh, female eagle. This happens over and over and over again. It's a very tiresome deal. But there's a thing, there, there's something that's going to happen here. The female is the one that chooses the male. Because all the males are after the female. You already missed the best part. So this sounds like you got to stick to it? I got to stick to it. Uh, okay. Morning, Doc. Morning, John. So we're talking about the eagle. Thank you, Pastor. So the male eagles, now think, think spiritually now, the male eagles are getting tired of picking up that stick and flying way on up just to do it over and over and over again. But here's what the male is doing. He is starting to let that stick fall closer and closer to the ground before he swoops it up and takes it back. That was due to showmanship. Aren't we, huh? right, Pastor? We're men, right? Seek, con 